Hi, I'm Scott Travis, Executive Director of Alumni Engagement at Hope College. We're here in Irving, Texas at ExxonMobil headquarters to present the 2020 Distinguished Alumni Award to Craig Morford. Craig Morford's name is synonymous with excellence in the legal profession, having served in some of its highest positions and receiving its highest honors. After recently serving as the Chief Legal and Compliance Officer of Cardinal Health, Craig is currently serving as Vice President and General Counsel of ExxonMobil. Prior to entering the private sector, he served more than 20 years in a variety of leadership positions with the United States Department of Justice. He spent much of his career as a federal prosecutor, pursuing corruption and organized crime cases in Northern Ohio. He then served as the U.S. Attorney in Detroit, Michigan, and the U.S. Attorney in Nashville, Tennessee. In 2007, he was appointed by President George W. Bush as Acting Deputy Attorney General, the second highest ranking official in the Department of Justice. In this role, he was responsible for overseeing the work of over 100,000 employees nationwide, including the FBI. Among other honors, in 2008, he received the Edmund Randolph Award, the highest award given by the Department of Justice, as well as Attorney General's Awards for Distinguished Service in both 2003 and 2005. He was named the Outstanding Assistant United States Attorney and was inducted as a Fellow of the American College of Trial Lawyers. Craig Morford has demonstrated exceptional achievement within his field and is an excellent example of the impact a Hope College graduate can have. It is our honor to name him as a 2020 Distinguished Alumni Award recipient. Well, Craig, it's an honor to be with you. You've had a remarkable career and done some fascinating, interesting, and important things. Uh, but before we get to that, let's look back. Uh, when you reflect back on your time at Hope, what was it about those four years that for you were transformational? What was it about your time at Hope that put you on the path to success? Yeah, so the, the biggest transformational event that happened to me at Hope College was the Washington Honor Semester Program. And the funny thing about it is it wasn't even on my radar. Wasn't applying for the program, wasn't interested in the program. Um, in hindsight, I was in very much in need of the program. I was kind of flopping around a little bit, but one of my professors, Dr. Zodaway in the political science mm -hmm. department, um, approached me one day and he said, I have an opportunity and I think it'd be perfect for you. I think you really need this. You could benefit from it. And make a long story short, I ended up uh, enrolling and going to Washington and it was a life-changing experience. Did you have an internship when you were there for the DC semester? Uh, yeah, we had two. And Do you remember so, where you worked? Yes, I worked at Kimberly Clark Legal Council. Okay. And then the second one was with a senator. It was Senator Schmidt okay. of New Mexico. Okay. And his claim to fame was he had been an astronaut uh, who walked on the moon. Oh, wow. Uh, the other thing about that semester that was special is it was the last few months of the Carter administration. Okay. And the country was in what President Carter had described as a malaise. We had super high inflation, we had high unemployment, and yet at the same time there were the seeds starting to be sowed for what later became known as the Reagan Revolution, which was a time of great optimism, growth, which was a really kind of cool and unique time to have yeah. been in Washington. Of course, any time you're in Washington at that age, it's a yeah. cool and unique time. By the way, I also did the Washington DC semester and I also had Dr. Zodaway. Oh, that's funny. Uh, and I think back at that and what amazes me is to Dr. Zodaway, I wasn't just some student in a seat in a class. Mm. He actually knew me well enough to know what I needed, mm. and um, that to me is pretty amazing. Dr. Zodaway's one example. Um, there was another uh, Professor Jeloma, who was an English professor, who took me under his wing and spent hours mm. trying to teach me how to write and communicate better. Mm. And we'd go to pizza at Skiles and sit around and talk mm. life. I mean, it was. I can count, you know, six, seven professors who I got to know personally who knew me, hmm. which is just a different experience than a lot of people I know who I talk to them about their college experience. As you look back on your time at Hope, what's the most special memory that stands out? So it's interesting. I, I went to Washington, I came back, yeah. and then you kind of get back to 
reorienting yourself to campus, but as I came back, I found myself being more serious, um, as I say, about career, about myself. And then three weeks into that, I met a girl named Mary Jo Wester. Um, we started dating. Uh, we fell in love. Um, two years later, we got married. And just Friday, we celebrated our 38th uh, wedding Congratulations. anniversary. Thank you. Congratulations. And um, just a wonderful life partner. And I know it's cliche, a lot of that happens at Hope, but um, it was that, that senior year, mm -hmm. kind of coming back from Washington, having mm -hmm. sort of a vision of what I want to do in my life, and then just meeting that special someone and all the memories of all the things we did. That, that year was probably one of the most special years of my life. Yeah. That's great. As you reflect back on your career, what, what are you most proud of? I think, I mean, God's blessed me in my career in crazy ways. And you and I were talking a little bit before we got started. We both served in White House. Uh, and that feeling I remember of walking in a room and sitting down at a table and looking around and seeing, you know, Condoleezza Rice, and Bob Gates, who was the defense secretary at the time, Hank Paulson, and thinking, the heck am I doing in this room? I don't belong here. Yeah. Um, somebody once told me, yeah, you don't belong there. Don't ever forget that. That's called humility. But nor does anybody else sitting in there. Right. That's called competence. You, you have every bit as much to add as they do, but you have no business there. And so it's that balance of competence and humility. And I think being able to go to Washington where I didn't feel prepared but being able to serve and, and look back and think of many things that I was able to touch and feel like I, I made them better by being there. And, mm -hmm. and you know, I always try to get up and say, what are the things that only I can do because God's put me in this mm -hmm. position? Uh, let's talk a little bit about what you've been doing, your career, uh, the amazing uh, trajectory you've been on. Uh, here we are at uh, ExxonMobil, which is by market cap one of the largest companies in the world. You're the, the top lawyer. Talk to me a little bit about what you're doing now. I don't think many people think about this, but you know the world's in a transition right now, and there's it's two parts transition, and we call it the dual challenge. Mm -hmm. A lot of people focus on the one part of it, which is incredibly important, which mm -hmm. is you know the need to lower emissions um, for the sake of you know the environment. And the second part, which doesn't get as much play, is that we have a continuing development in the world in which people are improving their lives, people that live in abject poverty in places. In that economic development, there's a huge demand for energy. Half the world that doesn't use energy today is going to need energy tomorrow. So how do you do that? Mm -hmm. It's got to be through technology, it's got to be through innovation, it's got to be research, and that's what we do. What was it about the broad aperture of knowledge, where you go both deep and wide, what was it about the liberal arts um, academic experience that you feel helped prepare you for your later success? I think, particularly in today's world, the kind of job I have, mm -hmm. breadth of knowledge and breadth of thinking mm -hmm. is really, really important. And so, you know, my job is interesting because I'm internal counsel here, so I'm a lawyer, in-house lawyer. Mm -hmm. At the same time, I'm a corporate leader as general counsel. Mm -hmm. I lead an organization that has you know, close to 400 lawyers, mm -hmm. an organization about 600 people, but I also interact with all the other vice presidents and presidents of the corporation, and you have to think broadly and you have to elevate. Mm -hmm. I don't think I could do this job if I didn't have that breadth of, of both breadth of knowledge, but also it's more breadth of thought, mm -hmm. because you don't necessarily remember the, the facts and the knowledge mm -hmm. as much as the thinking that comes out of that. Yes. The other thing I think is really important with a liberal arts education at a place like Hope that's faith-based is it really allows you to and causes you to look at what your core beliefs are mm -hmm. and what's really important to you mm -hmm. at that age where you're defining those things. And I think in today's world that is incredibly important because you know, you have those core values, those core beliefs, those principles yes. that are sort of your anchor in life. Yes. Beautifully said. Thank you. Thank you for that. And I love your description of it's not just liberal arts, but it's liberal arts with a strong faith environment. Yeah. And we talk about how that gives us a deeper motivation for our education. Because we love God, 
we have a deeper motivation to understand his creation. And because God commands us to love and serve others, we have a deeper motivation to educate ourselves and give ourselves the tools to go out into the world and do amazing things like you have done to love and serve uh, the world and to serve the, the, uh, the people that God has put in our lives. So you're, let's say you're fueling, pun intended, economic development. There you go. Uh, and I said, you're providing hope. Uh, you went to a college called Hope College. Uh, what does that word mean to you? What does that ideal mean to you? And one of the things we talk about at Hope a lot is that we're, we're proud of the fact that we're one of the few institutions in the world, academic institutions, that not, that's not named after a person or a geography. We're named after hope, this ideal that we happen to think the world is desperately in need of today. Uh, what does that mean for you? What does hope mean for you? And how do you, in your uh, personal life and your professional life, uh, how do you live out God's hope in, uh, in the world that you live in? I think it, p part of it is realizing we're not in control. Yeah. God's in control. Yeah. And then second, God loves us. Yeah. And, and, and third is that God's all powerful. It doesn't mean, you know, God's not a vending machine. You, you know, put your money in and you pull the thing and you get the candy bar you want. It's, it's not that at all. But it's that idea that God has our best interests in mind. And even in the darkest times, there's hope because we know God is still there. We know we're, we're his children. And so I start with that mindset. There, there's always hope for better. Hmm. And then never give up on that. Never lose hmm. sight of that. Because there's somebody greater in charge than hmm. any one of us. Well, Craig. It's an honor on behalf of Hope College for me to present you with the 2020 Distinguished Alumni Award. Congratulations. Oh, thank you so much. Um, it's beautiful, but even more so, it's incredibly meaningful because of what hope has meant to me. You've done a lot of uh, remarkable things in the world, and we're proud of you. Well, thanks.